it actually uh, starts with you at a microscopic microbial phase swimming around in a drop of water. You uh, eventually get larger, you move to land, you go through evolution, it's like many generations, uh, develop intelligence, go through a tribal phase, a civilization phase, uh, and eventually get out into space and then you start exploring the rest of the galaxy. I'm going to skip all the way to the end because it's NASA and I'm going to focus on the space part of this game. But uh, one aspect of this game is that as you're playing it, you're making stuff the whole time. You're making creatures, you're making buildings, vehicles, planets, etc. And as you make that stuff, it's actually a very compressed representation of it is going up to our server and being redistributed to all the other players. And so as you're playing the game, you're always encountering new creatures and things that uh, basically were created by other players. Let me move sound a little bit now. So basically, this is kind of our little cool galaxy we have here. Now, at this point in the game, as I said before, I've kind of evolved throughout the space. This is my home planet right here. Um, so up to this point in the game, I've actually put the entire game on the surface of the planet, you know, evolving out of this ocean. And this is really a uh, toy totally character for the planet. So the scales go off, you know, it's kind of uh, fantastical. But yet, uh, it has, you know, things like weather, it has ecosystems, it has, you know, geography. Uh, at this point, I can actually go out and look at my solar system. These are other planets nearby, so I have the moon here very close. And I can kind of click into any one of these things and zoom into it and explore it. Uh, each one of these planets is different. Uh, they're procedurally generated very rapidly from a uh, kind of interesting set of algorithms. They, in fact, compress down to about 32 bits of data. So uh, we really generate these very fast and very small amounts of data. We have things like gas giants here, different ones. Uh, the planets actually have different zones. Some are kind of weather lock zones. Some are kind of much closer in to the sun. Very hot and not so in the world. Uh, but you know, what we're looking at right here is just our local solar system. Uh, we can also pull away from our home star, and now we're out into uh, interstellar space. This is our home star right there in the center with our UFO around it. This is the nearby star field. Each one of these is a different world entirely. You can fly to, so I can pick one of these, and then fly over that star, and zoom in. And each one of these is going to be a unique planetary system. Uh, it's actually one of the interesting areas of science, and they're giving a pretty good sense now how common planetary systems are. One of the things I really wanted to convey in this world was kind of the vastness of the galaxy uh, and also the diversity of things like planets. Now, this planet actually has some very simple life on it, uh, which I want to collect and this, you know, help bootstrap life on other planets. One of the things uh, the player is driven to do in this game is to try to uh, bootstrap ecosystems on planets where they can now colonize them. So let's just point to this. This is kind of a dead moon here. Uh, <coughs> So what some of the tools you get on your UFO are terraforming tools that allow you to go in and actually sculpt the planet's surface. Uh, some of them are just kind of more geological. For instance, I can go in and like create uh, a little bit there. You simply go in and sculpt the planet by clay. Other ones are actually tending kind of to find it in the planet as well. So with this planet, uh, I can pick we have a really simple little uh, kind of planetary model here from you know, basically vacuum to very thick atmosphere, from very cold to very hot. This planet has almost a vacuum and it's very cold. So by using certain uh, items on here, I might drop a volcano on the surface, for instance. Which will now, over time, we'll start seeing the planetary surface change as the volcano, and we'll start seeing the atmospheric shell develop. As this little red dot up here is moving in the circle, what I'm really trying to do is get this into the middle of the circle where it's now habitable for kind of primitive life. Now, you know, as I'm carefully in the surface of this planet, what I'm really trying to do is make it habitable and then start bootstrapping the whole ecosystem on here. And that's, in essence, one of the reward structures I'm kind of going through in the game. So, um, in fact, it's a little bit higher. I had some biological samples that I've collected previously that, uh, first of all, I want to basically establish another volcano, though. I used to pull my volcanoes dry. Like atmosphere generators. So this is uh, a generator that actually pump atmosphere and then you need something and maybe a meteor shower. So this will be a combination of things. A lot of what we want the player to do is sit there and be able to basically kind of play around with.
the planetary ecosystems and get a sense of what the underlying structure and how they work, parts. So now I'm pulling a meteor shower, which is heated up. See, now we're actually in the first rain here, which means I can now, for the first time, start dropping down some of my biological samples. I'll drop down some sort of plants on the surface. And they'll start spreading if it's uh, successful. All of us. Yeah, now it is. In fact, it's going up too fast. I'm about to have way too thick in the atmosphere. Um, so I need to go back. We're also going to have some mass extinctions here. Carbon emissions. Yeah, I mean, uh, in fact, we have some really funny greenhouse stuff. We're about to have one actually. So I need to go back to my turbo tools really quickly and pull my atmosphere back in the right direction. That's what I'm going to be. What about mass extinction? Now, for the player that uh, you know initially wants to learn a lot of power, we have you know in most games you want the players to have very high level tools as well that they eventually earn. And this is kind of where the science fiction you know kind of meshes with science fact. Let's go to this other player here, which is also basically a bit airless mode. Um, over time, you can eventually earn this tool we call the Genesis device. Uh, and this will terraform the entire planet in one step. It's like a very expensive tool game. But uh, you can take a dead planet and bring life to it almost instantly. So the first thing it does is really like, 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 Genetic engineering, which means that I can kind of fully develop any creature I want 